how many God-given dreams have you and I left unrealized because fear placed us in a prison that we could not escape from? Let me ask us another question. How many God accomplishments with your name written on them, with my name written on them, have gone unaccomplished because fear paralyzed us? Think about that question. So here's the deal, if you and I continue, if you continue to live in fear, your family, your friends, your church, and the world will miss your unique contribution. Now let me say it a little bit more theologically and a little bit more strongly. You and I will rob God of his glory if we remain in fear, and I don't want to be a glory thief. But imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life, and you for whatever reason. You never pursued those dreams. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those gifts. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you died today, what dreams, what ideas, what leadership, what books, what gifts will die with you? A very good friend that I lost recently, Miles Monroe, said, the wealthiest place on the planet is not in the Far East where there's oil in the ground, it's not in South Africa where there are diamond mines. He said, the wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery, because there you find potential never realized. There you find dreams never pursued. There you find people allow themselves to be imprisoned by fear and living a small life. Maybe that's why one woman asked in a moment of anguish, what if you live your whole life only to discover it was wrong? Maybe that's why Henry David Thoreau said, oh God, to reach the point of death, only to realize that you've never lived, only to realize that you've never scraped the surface of your potential. Are you tired of being stuck in fear? Well, God wants to give us courage to face our fears. I grew up as a compulsive stutterer. One of my greatest fears in life was talking in front of people. Because when you stutter, it doesn't go so well and people laugh at you. Got laughed at a lot. I had to go to a little special class for people who can talk real good and other kids knew and they'd walk by the class like, hey, hey, how you doing? didn't want us to talk. I remember in 10th grade leaving a French class because I had to stand up and give an oral examination. I left the class. It was too painful. I didn't want to be laughed at. The teacher was very merciful and let me come in after class and everybody else left to give my message. In 1998, played one last year of professional football. Then in the fall of 1999, I was a brand new Christian and I was invited to go speak at a youth event. It's like former NFL player who loves Jesus, give him a microphone to speak. And I really wrestled with God. I said, God, why would you send me to go? I'm a compulsive stutterer. I'm a brand new Christian. Why would you send me to go? And all of the memories and, 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 and everybody making fun of me and I could see myself being on stage like stuttering and, and not knowing what to do and embarrassing myself again. And I was arguing with God, God, why would you do this? Why would you have them call me? Surely there's somebody better who can actually put words together. Why would you send me? I was afraid. I remember I was in the shower, just wrestling with God and praying to him. And a couple things happened, not an audible voice, but the first thing was this, Derwin, if I can raise my son Jesus from the dead, I can move your tongue to talk. And Derwin, I put something in you, a message of grace, and I want you to unleash it, but you've got to trust me. Fear became a friend because it pushed me to my daddy. Let me say that again. Fear became a friend because it pushed me to my daddy. So when the enemy knocks on the door, I let Jesus answer it because he takes me to my daddy. How about you? 
Where does fear take you to? A bottle? Prescriptions? So I went down there and I preached and note cards were falling out of my pocket and shared my story and at the end of it, a bunch of people came to Jesus. And God was like, see, I got this. What's your lo and behold moment that fear is right there, but you're paralyzed because you're afraid of your fear more than you love the glory of God? Maybe it's a broken marriage. And if you let people know that you're actually human and there's cracks and fractures in your life, but being afraid that people will actually know that you're human, that's why Jesus went to the cross, because he knows that we're broken. If you're hurting here today, we have a Savior who longs and loves to touch hurting people with his grace. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe your wife keeps telling you, you know, sweetie, I think you got a problem. A bottle of wine every night is a problem. Maybe for some of you, you're coasting through life and not really challenging yourself because you're afraid to fail. I'd rather try and fail than to never try. What you waiting on? Tomorrow's not promised. For some of you, God has some eptastic things right in your midst. Oh my gosh, what if I would allow my fear of stuttering to prevent me from going to Columbia, South Carolina in the fall of 1999? How many lives would not be impacted? I want you to feel the weight of this. What is God putting on your heart? What is that beautiful song in his symphony that he wants you to sing and you have that special note? Maybe some of you are afraid. Well, <laughs> I like what you said, preacher man. That was good. It got me going. But if I do something like that, I'll have to give up this stuff. Guys, in America, we've proven that we can get a lot of stuff. But have we proven that we can actually live stuff does not equate to life maybe right now you're thinking you know pastor derwin i i i, I feel what, what you're saying I, I really do but if i had this i could if i had this i would if i had this i should don't live a woulda coulda shoulda life you've got the lord you got everything you need right now in Jesus. Everything you need right now in him. I don't know what your giant is, but you have it. Attack your fear by trusting Christ. That's going to look very different and very unique in all of our lives. But in God's providence, that will be the case. And God doesn't want us to be paralyzed by fear. He wants that fear to move us to press into him so that he can fight our battles for his glory. Today, the Lord will conquer you. Today, God will heal my marriage. Today, God will touch the deepest and broken parts of my life. Today, the Lord will 